Hi, welcome to that pedal show. No Dan there. Mick here. Hello. The question is, can a cranked Marshall Plexi do a better clean sound than the clean sound we all know and love, the fabled Blackface Fender Super Reverb? This is a subject I've been thinking about for some time. Did a vlog just recently uh, with a friend of mine named Ainsley Lister. Now Ainsley, the link is uh, below by the way if you want to watch that. Ainsley is that kind of um, old school player who runs his amp a bit gainy and gets his clean sound just off the volume control on the guitar. Daniel did a video with Simon Jarrett from Kingsley Amps and Pedals, which went out last week. Um, and Simon talks a lot about his approach to dynamics. Now, I don't know about you, but all too often I find myself on 10 on the guitar because that's kind of the default position, thinking, wow, I just wish there was a little bit more of something here. Um, and indeed when I turn down, either too much goes away or there's not enough dynamic range just off this, off this volume control. As you can see, I have an extensive pedal board here, the reasons for which will become apparent as we go on. So let's begin with the Super Reverb. I've got it set to four on the, on the master there. It's in the uh, vibrato channel, knocked back a bit on the treble because the bright switch is on. So here's the venerable reissue Super Reverb. I'm not going to change anything at all. We're just straight, we're going to go straight into the Marshall this time. It is cranked. So when I say cranked, um, the two volumes, the high treble and the normal volume are at uh, three o'clock. Haven't turned them all the way up, gets a bit histrionic up there, but certainly if you know the 50 watt plexi, you'll know it's into heavy overdrive as you are about to hear. I've also got the Iron Man 2 um, 100 watt version from Tone King, just taking off 3 dB. It's not taking off much, it's just taking off enough so that I can stay in the game uh, as opposed to being hurt. <laughs> um, so I'll just give you a quick flash of the Fender again. The next thing you'll hear will be the Marshall as I've just explained. As you can tell, it's flipping loud. Uh, that was with the Strat. I'll just give you a quick flash with the Les Paul. loud. flicking the standby switch off just because there's so much noise. Um, the amps crank loads of noise. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying that clean sound. It cleans up really nicely when you turn the guitar down. So those of you running strats will know that sometimes if you turn down uh, 
the guitar, you can just get a load of treble loss. I think the super is going to do that for us. So we'll just go back to the super for a second. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate that. It was so muddy I played all the wrong notes. Um, what Ainsley does is he has this boost in the chain all the time. And what that's doing is it adds a buffer, right? So um, something else interesting that I'll explain in a sec, but it's not necessarily about the amount of boost you give it. It's the fact that the buffer um, makes it easier for these weak pickups and electronics and all the stuff that's going on in there to drive the whole signal chain and not lose so much treble. You'll hear the effect of it immediately. Let's turn it on. Uh, in the Quartermaster, that's the booster on, that's it off, okay? So here it is with it off. So you hear all that extra high end um, that the booster is putting back, even though it's not boosting very much. And just to prove that, the reason I've got it in a quartermaster loop is it's not true bypass, which means uh, it's doing that buffering job all the time. So just to prove it, I'm gonna turn the pedal off, but it's still engaged in the signal chain because you can see that loop one is lit, right? So here we go with it off. So many discussion points here, not least the effect of buffers on signal chains, uh, whether you want it in and out, um, bright switches, all of that. But what you can hear is that it's having an absolutely dramatic effect on the super, even though it's not even turned on. It's just in the signal path because it's not true bypass. So let's go back to the Marshall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mitigate some of that top end loss, even though it's not as bad in the Marshall, uh, by turning the buffer on and then the boost. And it's quite interesting what happens next.
Yeah, it's having a much less dramatic effect, but it's having an effect nonetheless. I want to turn some reverb on. I'm struggling with this very dry sound, so let's have some reverb. That's the Chase Bliss CXM 1978 in the loop of the Marshall. <coughs> Okay, that's pretty interesting. As you heard, um, for me, I preferred the sound of the booster and the buffer off with the cranked amp and just the guitar. <laughs> and there we are, what are we doing? We're stepping on a booster to get your clean sound with the volume turned down. Um, I just want to try that with the Les Paul in the interests of completeness, uh, just to see what it does with humbuckers. These are Gibson custom buckers, which is kind of their PAF alikes. So we'll remind ourselves of the full glory Oh, 
in case you weren't following, I turned the Marshall off. Uh, it was at the end there, the guitar was just straight into the Marshall with the neck pickup volume down to about three on the Les Paul. And then we're into the Super, right? On the uh, As the Super is set with the bright switch on, volume on four, and the neck pickup on the Les Paul at about, well, uh, six. That's fascinating. So obviously every booster is going to vary, but even just by having this one, because it's not true bypass. Now, of course, there are other ways to do this. People often talk about treble bleed mods in the guitar, where you put a little um, capacitor and resistor network across a volume pot, um, which preserves high end being dumped to ground. Stops so much high end being dumped to ground. Um, and that's another way to do it. But for those of you who don't like that or want another way, this adding a buffer in there for that is kind of counterintuitive because you're sort of adding something <laughs> which normally means kind of you know like more and louder and more aggressive but in this case it's putting back the, the top end and the sweetness of that clean tone what was interesting is more apparent on the Les Paul I thought in certain settings than the Strat uh, okay so where are we now then I think it would be only right to crank the Super into some overdrive and see what happens then Let's try that. Super's now on seven, which would be pretty overdriven usually. to the strap. Remember, super reverb, uh, volume on seven would normally be pretty overdriven.
Interesting, huh? Okay, so bit of a you know up and down walk through there through various combinations of guitar, boost, pedal on, pedal off, buffer only, cranked Marshall, cranked Fender, clean Fender, cranked Marshall. Back to the question at the top of the video: Can a cranked Plexi do a better clean sound <laughs> than than a Fender Super Reverb? Clearly, that is really all down to personal taste, and I guess there are those of you out there who will uh, much prefer the sound of the Marshall, those of you who will much prefer the sound of the uh, Fender, not least that it's me playing, so somebody else playing uh, with a different approach and uh, warmer fingers um, might yield different results. I'll tell you what I find interesting, the area of sort of um, expressive potential, if you like, from your fingers and pickups and all the rest of it, is just far greater than having the guitar on 10 into an amp set clean. And none of this is new, right? Of course it's not new. Players have been doing this ever since amps were invented. Uh, and I think there are still a lot of you out there who, you know, will quite often come up with a, God, just ditch the pedals and crank the amp, man. And there's a lot of sense in doing that. However, what I think it leads to is this dichotomy of saying amp gain versus pedal gain or you know clean amp versus dirty amp or whatever and we're sort of drawn into this false dichotomy of having to pick a side because for me it's not about you know whether you're talking clean or dirty sounds it's not an or question it's an and question what's the relationship of those two things working together there are a lot of people who quite rightly say that you know too much pedal too much overdrive pedal can sound a bit sterile and kind of lifeless. Similarly, too much amp can be, uh, you know, the same reason I didn't put the, the Marshall on uh, 10 all the way across, because it's so noisy and so cranked and so histrionic that really, well, A, I can't live with the noise coming out of the amp the whole time, and B, it's dynamic in the other way. There's kind of nowhere to go. I mean, it still will clean up a bit, but it's kind of too much. So perhaps the happy place for most of us is that ratio of how much the amp is driving and how much the pedal is driving to whether you're talking about clean sounds or overdrive sounds. And again, I'll just say again, you know, there's nothing new in this. This is as old as the hills, but I think it can sometimes just be a nice reminder of why we love classic guitars and amps and pedals so much. Let us know what you think then. Did you like the Marshall cranked with the guitar turned down and a bit of buffer? Or did you like the straight up classic Fender guitar in, guitar on 10? Um, there's a a huge amount of tonal ground here with just a single pedal. It's really good fun. Um, thanks for watching. There'll be more from us soon uh, and we really hope we can get back in the same room again uh, before too much longer. Please check out that pedalshowstore.com. Thank you to all our patrons. Thank you to all our exclusive retailers. If you click the description down, there's information on all of the above in there. Okay, until next time, I'll see you soon. <laughs>